this clip will be more topical than the series so far. I'll be dealing with so-called intelligent design, um, the theory that life has been molded by an intelligent agent, the designer. This is not the only topic here though. Uh, the arguments involved illustrate several candidates to a probabilistic principle that corresponds to the logical principle called modus tollens. I'd like to thank Newton 1692 for calling my attention to this problem and the argument Elias Sober has on this subject. In large part I will follow the argument of Sober, but I will part company somewhat at the end. Modus tollens works like this. Assume that A implies B, then you learn that B is false. You then know that A is false. An argument a little like this is used by intelligent design proponents uh, for criticizing evolution. The example I will use to illustrate this is the bacterial flagellum. It has been claimed by ID proponents that bacterial flagellum is an example of so-called irreducible design. By that it's meant that evolution would need to cause several independent things to happen simultaneously and that such events would be extremely improbable. On the face of it this follows the form of modus tollens with B being the non-existence of the bacterial flagellum and A being evolution. The argument is that A evolution leads with great probability to B the flagellum should not exist. But since B does not follow A for certain, it's a probabilistic argument and needs close inspection using probabilistic tools. So, here's the proposed rule. The probability of B given A is high, so the probability of not B given A is low. B is then shown to be false. That means that A is probably false. Well, that's simply not the case and here's why. Here's Bayes' formula on probability ratio or odds form. As you can see, the odds after the data is the prior odds times the data likelihood ratio, the probability of the data given model A divided by the probability of the data given not A. For newcomers, this may be a little abstract, but let's just handle the prior for now. What this formula says is that the outcome will depend on the prior probability of the model. The higher the prior, the higher the posterior probability of the model. So there can't be a probabilistic rule that concludes the probability of A is low. Rather, it needs to be on the form so and so, thus A becomes less probable. Here's an example. There's a medical test of a disease that always gives a positive signal if you got the disease, and only has a 4% chance of giving a positive reading if not. But the disease is rare with a 0.1% probability of any test subject having it. Of a thousand test subjects, you'll expect that one test positive because he has the disease, and about 40 will test positive falsely. Thus, if you test positive, it only means that the chance of you having the disease has increased, but only from 0.1% to 2.4%. If you let A be you haven't got the disease, and B be that the test reads negative, you got the ingredients in our proposed probabilistic modus tollens, and as you saw, it wasn't true in this case. Model A has become less probable, but it is still the most probable model. Let's modify our proposed rule. A implies that B is very probable, not B is absurd, thus A decreases in probability. In the ID case it should read like no bacterial flagellum is likely under evolution, thus its existence means that the probability of evolution being correct decreases. Is this correct rationale? Well, no! To see this, let's look at another example, before going back to base formula. A deck of cards can be said to be fair, or it can be salted, containing more than one instance of some card types and none of some other. Now, if I pick one card from this deck, I note that with a fair deck of cards, the probability for a 9 of hearts is low. It's 1 over 52. 
This is however not evidence of a salted deck, as you would have no greater reason to expect this outcome than going back to base formula. You see that in order to cause the probability of a model A to drop, the probability of the data must be greater under the alternative model. And here it is that intelligent design runs into a roadblock. Basically, ID proponents are not in the prediction game. They are not trying to calculate the probability for the bacterial flagellum under their model. One can understand why with such a vague idea, but without predictions, without the possibility of comparing probabilities, ID can't be called a model at all. Some say that it's a prediction uh, that one should expect purposeful design. However, there's a self-contained purpose in the sense of optimization by natural selection in the replication of biological organisms. With ID, one must identify purpose external to the survival of the organisms themselves. Without an ID about that purpose, you're stuck. Also, you can't compare the probability of something as vague as some kind of seeming purposefulness to the probability of a specific attribute evolved by a specific class of organism at a specific planet at a specific time interval. You need to compare the probability under the natural explanation with the probability under ID of said class of organisms to be designed with the specific attribute at the specific planet at the specific time interval. And in a rush to specify the ID model, you must avoid using data twice. Fitting the data by saying, since there's bacterial flagellum, God probably likes this type of design. And evaluating the model by saying, since he likes this kind of design, the bacterial flagellum is probable, just doesn't work. I could say more on this subject, but maybe I should save it for a video outside of this series. The probability under the natural explanation is not simply the probability of all steps on the road being evolved at once, but also the much harder probability of evolution happening in a couple of so far undiscovered middle steps. As it turns out, such middle steps have later been found for the bacterial flagellum, and such has been the fate of all so-called uh, irreducible design ideas where there's been time to study the subject further. As seen, there is no probabilistic modus tollens on the form that ID proponents would like. If the odds for evolution versus intelligent design should decrease, the bulk of our biological data must be less surprising under the ID model than under evolution. My conclusion is the same as Sober's. ID is not a scientific theory and is not really trying to be one either. As long as ID isn't producing specific predictions, there's simply no reason to take it seriously. However, I do disagree with Sober when he says that there's no probabilistic modus tollens. As argued in clip 3, implications can be relaxed. Instead of A implies B, you could have that the probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B given not A. This worked for the principle in clip 3. It contains a comparison of data likelihoods, so maybe it can work here also. The claim is now that if the probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B given not A, and you observe not B, then A decreases in probability. Is this correct? Yes! And here's the proof! One example from clip 3, let B be it rains and A is its overcast. It's assumed that the probability of rain is greater when it's overcast than when it's sunny, which is the relaxed case of uh, rain implies overcast. Then the observation it doesn't rain implies that the probability of overcast decreases. Reasonable, isn't it? Of course, this version will not help the ID proponents at all.